Thursday is the latest showdown among the executive and legislative branches of the Israeli government. This is the second hearing of the incapacitation law convened, which essentially makes it harder to remove a sitting prime minister. The purpose of the amendment was to fill the gap in the law. There was a problem with the law. When the Knesset amended it, it also amended it for itself. It wanted it to also apply to the current Knesset and government because it thought that this arrangement was better than the previous one. The legislation marks another amendment to the nation's quasi-constitutional laws, which the coalition has been pushing for. The opposition and those petitioning against the law say it aims to provide personally motivated immunity to the incumbent premier. Benjamin Netanyahu. And this is why we're here today in the Supreme Court, trying to fight the, the, the try to use the Israeli parliament to help a prime minister who is under indictment to escape his uh, criminal cases. Protesters outside the High Court in Jerusalem amid the proceedings towed a similar line and went further by calling on the justices to repeal the bill. A ruling on the incapacity clause, whether to uphold it, quash it or delay it, was not expected at Thursday's hearing. It's part of, a, of an ongoing legal battle that, that has several fronts. This particular front has, has been narrowed down to the issue of the timing. The court said whether we think that this is a, a, a good law or not is irrelevant. The question is, when will it apply? The court first needs to clear the issue of abuse of constituent power, the notion that the ruling majority may be trying to protect the current prime minister. A ruling on the law itself is only expected by January. Still, and regardless of either outcome, the very existence of this law is simply adding more salt to a string of wounds of a severely polarized society.